I work with half a dozen different organizations. And I've actually been a volunteer in the community for more than 20 years, but you know, just more of it now that I'm not working. And uh, this organization here, the Home Front Cares, is my primary one. It was started by two Vietnam vets who didn't want to want to happen to this generation, what happened to us when we came back. I'm also very active with the uh, what's called the Veterans Trauma Court. We've been in operation now over four years and uh, <clears throat> currently have 120 soldiers in the program. It's a really good program. And uh, basically, if they complete the program, which can be up to two years, their, their felony charges are dismissed. It's, it's actually a grant on the, under the Colorado Department of Behavioral Health Jail Diversion Program, Assistance to Veterans, is the big, long, flowery title. So all of the veterans that are in the program have a diagnosis of either uh, PTSD or TBI, traumatic brain injury. You know, certain offenses we can't deal with, but most of the felonies we can. Certain offenses, like if there's sexual assault on a child or something, because we're not really equipped to deal with that. But it's an excellent program, and um, we've had uh, a number, you know, like five or six dozen that have graduated so far, and the recidivism rate for those who completed the program is zero, which is huge. It's unheard of. Another one I've been active with for about 15 years is the, uh, the El Paso County Homeless Veterans Coalition. And um, what we do is we put on the uh, annual stand down for the veterans here every year at the city auditorium. And this year we had our highest number of attendees. We had 196. And uh, 14 of those were females. One of them had five children. Um, Sentinels of Freedom is another excellent program that we've had. It's a scholarship program for soldiers with severe physical injuries. And we cover their housing and you know all their incidentals so they can go to school full time. We had uh, a local chapter here for several years. They brought everything up to the national headquarters now as far as administration, but we put a, a half a dozen soldiers through that. That's a very expensive program to do because the commitment can be you know, $50,000 or more easily for each soldier. What we do here at the Home Front Cares is emergency financial assistance for active duty and veterans. We work with their um, landlords, their loan companies, whatever, uh, they present their bills to us and we'll actually pay the vendor directly. We've raised over six million dollars and it's all privately uh, foundations, corporations, and individuals. We don't take any federal money or state money. You know, we, we take them out of society whole. Too often we put them back broken and they just need some help. They do. They just need some assistance. They're not looking for a handout. They're looking for a hand up just to get them over the hump. I'm a, a Vietnam vet and um, I remember how badly we were treated, you know, in those years, and we just don't want it to happen in this generation. And what's great is that the country, for the most part, you know, even though we're war weary and all that, they haven't taken it out on the veterans. You know, they really haven't, you know. The veterans are still held in, you know, esteem and treated well and, and things like that, and that's, that's such a huge change from what it used to be, so it's well worth it. You know, the, uh, the veterans that, uh, you know, I got out after the war too, as did many others. And uh, <laughs> basically we were the throwaway generation, you know. And the soldiers that had serious issues, you know, couldn't get help or couldn't get the help they really needed. And now there's so many, this is such a wonderful community to work in, especially here in El Paso County. There's so many agencies, they've got so many great programs in the military, they've got so many great programs when they get out of the military, and it's just, uh, you know, gratifying to see that we've learned from our mistakes. I, this is a married military now. You know, back in my day, uh, the majority of us were not married, and now the majority are married. So you, you got the whole dynamic of the family and children and everything else that we didn't have before. So we've learned to treat them as a unit, you know, a family unit. My main thing is I'm a networker. Um, I'm involved with a lot of agencies. You know, I've, I've been able to, to meet and work with a lot of people in town. And so what I try to do is, you know, when we find soldiers with issues, uh, I get them connected with the, who they need to be connected with and get out of their way. You know, we'll sit there and we'll, we'll discuss their issues, we'll discuss their problems. I may not necessarily give them the cure, but I'll give them the connection. We, we have a duty and an obligation to help this generation, especially to transition back into the civilian world which for many of them is, you know, a lot of them came in right out of high school. 
They've been in the military six or seven years. They may have been deployed three or four times in that, so they have very little time really in the States, and even when they're in the States, they're training at Fort Carson, they're out at the National Training Center at California, and uh, so really don't have a lot of contact you know, with this uh, civilian populace other than maybe Tejon Street on Friday night. You know, Our biggest challenge is finding them before it's a crisis. So uh, when they first get out of the service, they tend to want to take a little time off. They tend to isolate. Uh, unfortunately, all too often in, in this organization, in Veterans Trauma Court, and the Homeless Coalition, uh, they surface at the 11th hour when now it's a crisis. They're out of money. The house is about to be foreclosed. We get calls on Friday afternoon. It's, hey, they're shutting the utilities off tomorrow morning and it's February and I got two kids and the husband's deployed. Another organization I serve with, I'm on the board for the Pikes Peak Suicide Prevention here. And we have special veterans programs and things like that. And uh, the issue there again is finding them, you know, before it's a crisis, before they've attempted or something like that. These are tough kids. They're uh, used to taking care of themselves and taking care of other people. And uh, for them to ask to help, uh, things normally have to get pretty bad before they'll do it. So a lot of times when we see them, they're two or three months behind the mortgage. And they're, they've, you know, they're very seriously, you know, considering suicide or, you know, just all these issues. And so quite often when they're already in crisis, we don't deal with them. But that's okay, because that's what we're set up for. The problem is if we don't help them now, and then if they have serious issues like PTSD or TBI, they will re-enter the system at one point or another, or normally through the backseat of a police car or the emergency room at the hospital. So our job is to find them, you know, hopefully well before that and try to prevent that. It keeps me busy. It does.